back now to tonight's main report. Catholics around the world have reacted with shock to the first papal abdication since the Middle Ages. Italy's Prime Minister Mario Monti said he was very shaken, whilst in Germany, Pope Benedict's home country, people expressed their disappointment. But what about the faithful in this country? How have they reacted? Our North of England correspondent Kieran Jenkins is at Liverpool's Catholic Cathedral. Kieran. Well, John, there's a strong Catholic uh, heritage here in Liverpool, so much so that when uh, Pope Benedict became Pope in 2005, they held an impromptu mass here in celebration. Well, the, the worshippers were back here again this evening, but in very different circumstances. A chance to reflect after a turbulent day for the Catholic Church. Not that anyone here saw it coming. I think people are a little bit flabbergasted, really, you know, but hey, this health's impaired. Um, well, most popes, they just um, die or become ill and stuff, you know, so you never expect a pope, you know, to retire. I was fortunate to have been in Rome last Wednesday at the uh, weekly papal audience and I thought to myself how well the Pope was looking and uh, how robust he seemed. But thoughts are now turning to Pope Benedict's successor. Although few here had heard of the candidates, they do have very clear ideas about what he should stand for. No, but I think uh, now would be the time for reform and uh, maybe some new ideas. What does reform mean in the context of the Catholic Church? I think so, anything that would help. Uh, re-engage the youth. What would you like to see come next? Would you like to see something a bit different, a bit more radical, less no, conservative? No, 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 no. I, I, I just want things to stay the same. You know, I mean, that, as I say, that's up to the clergy, the way they decide which way to do it. If there were a black pope, an African pope, how do you feel? Fine, absolutely wonderful if that should happen to be the case. Uh, there is no reason why not. There are many, many uh, holy uh, African priests and bishops and that, that would be wonderful. So the bafflement uh, expressed by Catholics worldwide, really, very much in evidence uh, here in Liverpool. And so too the stark differences of opinion about whether the next pope should be a reformer or another safe pair of hands. Well, we're joined now by Catherine Pevenster, the editor of the Catholic magazine The Tablet, and by Pascal Ouche, who was chosen to become the, the person to welcome the Pope during his visit to the United Kingdom in 2010 and had been named as one of the UK's leading young Catholics. Catherine Pevenster, um, let's just deal with this, this Pope. Will he be seen, do you think, in the end as a bridge between the last one and the next one? Or was there something more special about him? I think he was very much the the intellectuals pope, um, a very fine writer, a uh, considerable legacy in that sense. But it's been a pretty tricky papacy for many reasons. He certainly was a bridge between John Paul II and where we are now. As to whether he's a bridge to the next one, well, it depends on who they choose. And how do you view him? You shook his hand, you, um, you, you presumably chatted with him even. Yeah, I was very privileged. Um, I see him as a pope who spoke very clearly about what the church believes. Um, sometimes that offended people, but he was very clear on what the church believes, and I think that spoke a lot to us, especially as young people, uh, aff affirmation of what it is that we should believe. Well, you referred to the... It was a very troubled time to be pope. Um, one of the troubles is that, of course, in the north, uh, the Catholic Church is running out of priests. In the south, it's vastly expanding and the rest of it. Um, priests in the, in the north of the world, surely you will only be able to address that if you let them marry. Yes, and I don't think that is a particularly difficult thing for the Catholic Church. We've had people such as Cardinal Cormac Murphy O'Connor in this country say previously it's not the, the greatest stumbling block. And we've, of course, in this country have had men come from the Church of England and become Catholic priests. And it's been fine. People have accepted them. I think it's, it's, it's worked very well. So but it would be very difficult for a group of these cardinals to say, we want a man who's going to expand the church by just getting rid of this celibacy rule. I don't think they'd probably put it like that, but I think if it, if it came in, it, it wouldn't be a disaster. Uh, I don't think it would be that dramatic. Mm. It might be expensive. Well, one of the things, I mean, you come originally, your family comes from... Uh, Nigeria and one of the issues obviously in Africa is for example the spread of AIDS, HIV, 
and of course contraception is one of what, I mean, the condom in particular is, is a way of, of combating that. And in the end, the Catholic Church simply will not preach contraception. And I think that's the point. The Catholic Church won't preach that. And we are looking for a Pope who is going to change the Catholic Church's teachings. Hopefully, I represent other young people. But what we want is a Pope who is faithful to the teachings of the Church, because we believe that that's how God loves us, through the teachings of the Church. And that's what we desire, not somebody to bring their opinions, but rather to be faithful to the teachings that have always been there. But then, of course, the other thing which has terribly marred his time has been the whole handling of the child abuse thing. That, as a young person, cannot be something that attracts you to the Catholic Church of recent decades. And I think you're, it's about the handling of that, and that can always be done better. And I hope that it is done better in, in the future. Um, but that isn't something fundamental in terms of changing the teachings of the Church. Rather, the expression of how we share the love of Christ uh, can be done better. What's your feeling about it? Well, it's clearly been one of the most significant things of the last few years, while Benedict XVI has, has been on the throne of St. Peter. I think one of the most shocking things for Catholics has been not mm. even the abuse, but it's been the mm. cover-ups of the abuse. Uh, that, mm. That's been truly devastating. And that is something which they've, they've got to deal with, they've got to, to tackle. Because even if we don't have more cover-ups, even if there's now a decline in the numbers of, of case, historic cases coming forward, they've got to look at why it is that the church sometimes put itself first and not the children. Quick pagan question. Who's going to be the next pope? From Latin America, Africa, Britain, Italy? I think it's great that it's outside of... It's, the recent ones have been outside Italy. Um, it would be nice to have one from the third world, maybe Africa. Um, but the fundamental thing is one that is faithful to the teachings of the church. Your sense? I think at this time they might go for one outside Europe. They began thinking about that last time. They then went for, played safe, went for Europe. What? I think this time it could happen and be outside Catherine Europe. Pappenster. Thank you very much, Pascal. Appreciate it.